Hello, hello. In case you missed it, this week Stevie Wonder's slayed in accessibility at the Grammys. He opened up the envelope to announce the winner for Song of the Year, and when he opened it, he exposed the envelope to the camera and started teasing viewers, na 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 na, you can't read this, you can't read braille. Child, I died. As I mentioned in my video, when an invitation is not enough, oftentimes when spaces are inaccessible, they can feel incredibly and cruelly unwelcoming. Like we don't deserve the same access to those things or those spaces. And that's kind of what he was playing at. He followed up by saying, I just want to say, before I say the winner, that we need to make everything accessible to every single person with a disability. And I'm so glad that he used that platform to make it known. Recently released has been the trailer for Me Before You, a romantic film about a miserable disabled man who finds his life meaningless and worthless and finds love with a quirky, able-bodied young woman. So, spoiler alert, but not really because it's a book, so it's all out there. But in case you don't want to know how it ends, I will give you three seconds in three, two, one. He ends up killing himself so his love can use his money to live a happy life without him. I want to side table the discussion about suicide and assisted suicide for the time being and just focus on representation. We so rarely get to see people with disabilities in the media. And when we do, they are often represented to be people who find their lives not worth living. People with low self-esteem, low self-worth, and think that the world would be a better place if they weren't around. What would happen if we did this to every other group with their representation? If every person of color you saw in the media wanted to kill themselves, thought their lives worthless and inconvenient to others, therefore the world would be better off without them because they are living in a racist society. I'm not questioning that these can be real stories, but they are not our only stories. And it is harmful to perpetuate this idea that life ends at disability. And on top of all that, an able-bodied actor is cast as a disabled character and once again, denying opportunities to disabled actors. Finally, let's talk about how there's a new app for Netflix that will provide trigger warnings. Oh no, Annie, people get so easily offended by stuff. It needs to stop. Pause. I will delve deeper into the topic of appropriating and misusing language from spaces for the disabled and chronically and mentally ill in another video, but for now I want to clarify that a trigger warning does not mean to be bothered or offended. Trigger warnings are for folks with trauma, with PTSD, that can be triggered into panic attacks, meltdowns self-harm, etc. Now drop that nonsense about how much you dislike trigger warnings and think that they weaken people. Trigger warnings help those who need it to navigate spaces safely. And we should all be putting forth our best efforts to make spaces as accessible as possible. The app is called Fearless. It works with Netflix and it's very easy to join. Everyone is welcome because it works through community submissions where other people have to report things that may be triggering to other people. Once a warning is in place, there will be a 30 second warning so that a user may choose whether or not to proceed with that particular piece of content. You can go to fearless.us to download the app. That's it for In Case You Missed It this week. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments. I will be back tomorrow, probably, with another video. Bye.